There's no doubt sharks have an image problem. Razor sharp teeth, the icy stare, bloody feeding frenzies. It's no wonder they've earned such a woeful reputation. And after all, they do occasionally kill people. No species has worse public relations issues than great whites. And no sharks are more popular with shark divers. About 250 miles west of Mexico's Baja Peninsula is the remote volcanic island of Guadalupe. From the port city of Ensenada, it's a journey of nearly 24 hours on the open ocean to reach Guadalupe. Approaching the intimidating coastline of the island, the first order of business is to prepare the shark cages. Keep lots of tension on that line, okay? This is the one that's like a jigsaw puzzle. Here we go. That's it. Just rotate it around a little bit more, please. About a thousand pounds of cage that we're lifting here in open ocean with a wee bit of a swell going. My goodness. Just beautiful. We put the cages in at night. As soon as we get here, we like to get everything all organized and in the water just in case there's any kind of problems. It's nice to get everything tied up and to get the chum slicks started and make sure that the white sharks know that we're here and we're ready for business at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Guadalupe is an arid and desolate outpost in the open Pacific. Towering cliffs and rugged mountains rise over 4,000 feet from sea level. 19th century whalers brought goats to Guadalupe as a source of fresh meat. The animals multiplied as intended and eventually destroyed most of the island's flora and fauna. Today, some of the few original inhabitants that remain are fur seals, sea lions, and elephant seals. And life here must be harsh. This is the realm of the Great White. In the late 1990s, long-range fishing boats targeting tuna near Guadalupe began reporting that great whites were attacking their catches. Words spread like a chum slick. Come on, here he comes. Oh, beautiful. Oh! <laughs> the industry started here in uh, 2000 when a boat called the Horizon showed up and uh, they had heard stories about sport fishing boats not being able to bring their fish in because the white sharks were taking all the tuna. More white sharks than anyone had seen anywhere. So we came down here on a whim. I wanted to see white sharks off the back of the boat. But uh, we got down here, I jumped in the water, I saw these enormous, beautiful sharks. I couldn't believe how fantastic they were. It was just an amazing experience. And at that point, I knew that I wanted to keep on doing this. It was just no question in my mind. And we ramped up from two trips that first year to nine to 10 trips a year. Like the sharks at Tiger Beach, Great whites in Guadalupe need to be coaxed with bait. And nothing piques their interest like tuna. Shark baiting 101. You make it smelly, you make it bloody, you make it oily, you get all this good yummy stuff. You mix it up with your fingers and scrunch it up to get lots of blood. You make sure that you use animals that are endemic to the islands, mackerel and tuna. And uh, we start at Chum Slick. We do it in a very non-invasive way, but we make it as smelly and yucky as we possibly can. One way to make sure that your chum is nice and fresh. We take a little bit of chum just like this, and we'll see what the mackerel in the water do. 
Whoa, look at that. Seagulls, mackerel, and a feeding frenzy. That is fresh tuna. It's one thing to see a great white on television or from the safe confines of a boat. It's another experience entirely to see the animals in their natural element. There simply isn't a single creature on Earth that we're more afraid of. I just couldn't believe how big they are and how beautiful they are. I mean, they're, they're just, they're not, not at all ferocious looking. They, they look like they're smiling at you until they open their mouth. Captain Mike Lever has two young children with a keen interest in sharks, and he's now trying something completely different, introducing kids to white sharks. The inaugural children's trip at Guadalupe included three kids from Mexico and Mike and Marianne Lieber's own children, Charlie and Emily. What's your name? Hi, Nesta. Do you think you're gonna see? A fly? Yeah, what? It's salty. It's salty. Yes, oh, it's salty. It's salty. Yeah, salty. salty. Where'd it go? All the way down. Go. It didn't take long for the children to get the hang of breathing from a regulator. And once they started spotting sharks, the biggest challenge was dragging the kids out of the water. Shark coming in, left to right. I don't recall what I was doing at six years old, but it wasn't diving with white sharks. I think it was like riding my tricycle around the street or something like that. Well done. That was great. Charlie, it's someone else's turn now, OK? I know Charlie did not want to come up. Every time a shark would come by, Charlie would be the first guy to go, oh, there's a shark right over there. He just did a fantastic job. I am so proud of him. I think he's just had an experience that he's never, ever going to forget. I don't think any of them have had any trepidation at all. It's been fantastic. They've been in the cages, they've seen the sharks, they've tried to help out on the boat, they want to throw the bait, they want to do everything. I mean, that's, you know, if they go and tell 10 kids and 10 more kids, it can't be any better than that. I saw four. I was freezing. I wanted to come out. She didn't want to come out. I gotta go to the bathroom. And she won't come out. And I kept saying up. She's like, no. Up? No. <laughs> we brought some kids out here. We're just wrapping the trip, and it succeeded beyond my wildest expectation. Every kid, every one of them, got in the cages, ended up spending hours and hours in the cages. We had to drag these shivering little five and six year olds out of the water after an hour or two because they didn't want to come up. They just loved watching the sharks going by. 
and I can't wait to find out what happens when they get home and they start telling their friends. Guadalupe is a protected biosphere of Mexico, but with minimal funding or monitoring of the waters surrounding the island, the sharks are under constant threat from poachers. A set of mature white shark fins can fetch upwards of $25,000, and an intact jaw is an extremely valuable prize. It's an uphill battle convincing impoverished fishermen or foreign fishing fleets that white sharks here are more valuable alive than dead. I love these animals, I really do. These white sharks are amazing. In the last three days, I've had my five-year-old son and my seven-year-old daughter in the water with them, and it was just a thrill. And I can only hope that the sharks are still gonna be here for them, and for their kids, and their kids' kids. Nothing could have given me a greater thrill than to have spent an hour and a half in the water with Charlie this morning, having him point out the white sharks to me. I'm very, very fearful that we're seeing the end of these and that even five years from now or 10 years from now, there won't be any sharks left. <laughs>